Hi everyone, it's Walter from Zimstones by Walter. And it seems that uh, a, a shadow box or what some are calling a, a diorama um, type of card with sliding doors is kind of the craze uh, right now with several companies coming out with dies that will um, allow you to cut the, the pieces that you need to make such a card. Um, they're interactive and they're a lot of fun. Uh, but all of us who are crafters know we have, you know, limited resources for our crafting budgets. Um, and since it is a smaller size that the dies cut and I wanted a larger one that's a five by seven, I went ahead and started to play around and experiment and came up with a way to make one um, that doesn't require any dies. And I'm gonna walk you through that today. It's We're going to make this really fun, um, it folds down to a five by seven size card, um, shadow box with sliding doors. Um, on the outside, it has these beautiful iron gates, a brick wall, um, a caution sign about what's on the other side of the gates, along with this really creepy hand coming up from behind the gates. And when you open it, you end up with this really cute um, haunted house saying Happy Halloween and Boo with the moon and some dark grass leading up to it. Um, and it's super easy to do. So let's get started. Okay, so I have all of my pieces uh, pre-cut, and we'll go over what you need. You'll need a 5x7, I'm using a black front panel. I then also have a 6x7 um, black um, panel that is going to go behind it um, to be used for the frame um, of the sliding doors. We then have two four and three quarter by 11 inch panels, which will um, turn into the sliding doors as well as the sides of the card. And then I also have two four and three quarter by three and a half inch white panels that will put onto the sides to create um, the background for the, the front of the door. Then I have a five by six uh, white back panel that we will go ahead and um, color for the, the backdrop of the card and the arms will attach to the back of it. And then there's some scrap things that you'll need. I have just a piece of black scrap paper that I'm gonna use for cutting my um, iron gates. And I also have um, a piece of white paper for stamping out the image of the haunted house. And I have this scrap piece of, of brick, um, uh, uh, that was made with an embossing folder um, and some colors to, to, to make it look like a brick wall. And since I have the scrap and it's the perfect size, I'm going to end up cutting it and having that be um, a brick wall on each side of the iron gates. And then lastly, I'm going to use a piece of double-sided adhesive um, paper that will go ahead and um, when we cut out the iron gates, make it easier to adhere it down to the front panels. So I took the first uh, five by seven black panel and I used this uh, waffle flower. It's an A2 sized um, cutout, ran it through, and that's gonna create the window in the front part of the frame. I then took the, uh, the other piece of black for the frame and I scored it on each of the left and right sides at three quarters um, in from each side, and then a half inch down on each side. And now we're going to go ahead and cut out this center because that will allow us to fold that down, fold the sides in, and then attach it to the back of the frame. Okay, so as you can see, I have the front of the frame and I now have that back piece. And what I'm gonna do is use some double-sided tape and some glue and I'm gonna put that um, together and we'll have the front part of our frame. So next we wanna create the night sky in the background um, so that it gives it time to dry. What I like to do is I have a piece of a cardboard box that has sides, uh, four sides that are probably about two to three inches going around so that there's some depth there. Put a piece of um, paper down the bottom 
So then when you see, I'm gonna be using um, Distress Spray and some Mica Spray. And so if you spray it in the box, um, less of a mess and you have a place to keep them safe as you go ahead and clean it up. So the first coat is going to be with this um, Tim Holtz Distress Spray Stain Stormy Sky. Give it a good shake. And then you just start going ahead and spritzing your paper. The great thing is you can do it however you like because you're going to be moving stuff around um, and it's gonna look great no matter how you do it. So that's the first base. I then want to go ahead and um, give it a little bit of shimmer and a little bit of a different look. And so we're gonna use this Distress, uh, Tim Holtz Distress Mica Stain. And this is from the winter release last year and it's called um, Winter Frost. And you definitely wanna give this a good shape to go ahead and get the all of that mica down the bottom um, that you can see there moving around. And then you just go ahead and spray away. The last thing that I like to do um, to go ahead and get the, um, I, I like the effect of it, and it also um, kind of sets the ink nicely, is I have just some rubbing alcohol inside of a spray bottle and I just give a few spritzes of that. I really like how it helps it all set up and the overall look that it gives. And so we're going to go ahead and set that aside and let that dry. So the skies are now dry. Just look at those beauties. And what I actually like is um, you'll notice that there's these little little circles um, randomly around the paper and if you're doing a haunted house um, I think that's kind of cool because they can kind of look like little orbs floating around. Next up is creating the iron gates and so what I did is I took my my scrap black paper that I'm going to use for the base of the gates and I put um, the double-sided adhesive paper onto the back of it sorry about that um, so that when I cut it out um, I'm not going to have to um, put adhesive uh, glue onto the back of the gates because they are a pretty intricate cut. So I'm using these gate dies um, from Altenew that I really like, um, and I think they go well with this particular um, uh, theme for the card. So I'm going to cut out my gates and we'll be back. Okay, so the iron gates are cut out and it has the adhesive background on the back of it. I'm going to use this Tim Holtz Distress Mica Stain called Iron Gate. It was from last Halloween's release to, uh, to color these. Once again, shake it up and then just spritz them. And again, like, you know, you can go for different, um, different amounts of coverage if you're looking for a little bit of black to show through or if you're looking for a little bit of age. Um, it's really whatever you'd like. So we're going to let those dry. Okay, so now we're ready to start creating the um, doors and the arms of the sliding uh, part of the card. So I factored in that I want to have a quarter of an inch on the side to be able to pull and open the doors. So I'm lining this up so that it starts at a quarter of an inch. Going down to... Um, at the five and a half mark. So between 11 and five, uh, five and a half. So if you go to the halfway point, um, that's going to put you at one, two and three quarters um, inches to be the midway point between the two. So I actually have both arms there and I'm gonna go ahead and score them so that we know where to, um, where to fold each and be able to have them um, and also to have the uh, to be able to have the panels centered for each. So we're going to score that, and that does look like it's half and half. 
Now that we have that, um, we're then going to score the, um, the side part um, that will end up folding. And for that, if we go ahead and figure on um, starting right here where our first fold is, and we should have that be about um, at least two inches. Um, it could go as long as three. So um, in order to, to make it nice and easy, I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and we'll score it again at the five. And then in order for it to fold in the middle, we'll want to go ahead and score it um, halfway through. So that would be an inch and a half in from either side, which would go ahead and put us right here. And then that will be the point where it um, folds in half um, to allow it to collapse down to a standard size for a card. And I'll show you that once I have the folding done. Okay, so once you fold, um, and, and this is obviously not the finished product, but it's going to look something like this in the front. We'll do with our, our panels. Um, but when it opens, you're going to slide the doors, and then um, your back panel will be here, and we'll have that folded around it so that it's actually then going to extend the arms to allow for the shadow box to be formed. Okay, so I put some double-sided adhesive tape onto the back of one of the sky panels. Now, keeping in mind that you want to have about a quarter of an inch at the end um, for pulling, um, I'm going to go ahead and align this onto my door. That lined up against the, um, against the, the side. And then we'll go ahead and put that there. Um, we'll do the same thing for the um, for the other side. Okay, so we got the the um, panel on the other door. Now I'm taking one of my iron gates, and they're going to be lined up like that with the other one on this side, so that it you know looks like the gates are closed. And we want to measure out what we're going to need um, to add in if you choose to add um, a part of a wall, a brick wall on the side. So that looks to be about one and three quarter inches. And I'm probably going to just cut this in half and go like, or, or measure out an inch up um, for each of them. So it'll be an inch in, in regards to the height and then about an inch and three quarters for the width to cover from the gate to the end of the sky panel. Okay, so I cut a section of the wall, and again, this is optional, but I, I like the look of it. And so, as you can see, it's going to line up really well so that we have the edge of the gate against there, and then um, it, the, it's the, the wall is going to go right up into it um, to make it look like it's an actual, um, you know, short little brick wall around the, um, around the place. Um, and the uh, iron gate on the side. I'm going to um, adhere it with some double-sided tape, and then the, the gate already has the double-sided adhesive on the back of it, so I'll go ahead and um, lay that down, and I'll do the same for the other panel. Okay, so I have both sides done, and as you can see, this is how it's going to line up in the frame, um, so that you have the, the stone wall on either side, you have your gate in the center, and I actually think it would be fun to have um, something that would um, kind of give a warning. So I'm going to create a little wooden sign that I'm going to attach to, to one side, but will come across um, and uh, with like the word caution or beware or something. Um, and since I'm constructing the, the haunted house using... Um, a rubber stamp from um, Blank Page Muse. This is the, the rubber stamp I'll be using for the haunted house. Blank Page Muse also has um, a caution and a beware word stamp. Um, so I'm going to decide which one I'd like to put on, create like a little sign. I'll show you what I did, um, and then we'll attach that there as well. Creating the wooden sign is going to be really easy. I have this uh, 3D embossing folder from Altenew, 
and it, it's a, a nice wood grain look to it. I took a scrap piece of white paper, misted it with some water on the back, and you do that so that as it goes through um, the embossing folder that it won't go ahead and um, crack or rip your paper. And really, for something like this, it's, it's you're not looking for perfection. You're looking for just something kind of old and rustic. So you can just lay the paper in there. I, you know, lined it up a little bit with the lines of... Um, uh, for, of the wood on the embossing folder. Um, for this particular um, uh, Altenew embossing folder, I only need one of my plates along with my platform. So I'll go ahead and put a, a top plate over that and just run it through, run it through again. I always do it more than once. And now you'll see what you end up with is this really nicely embossed piece of white paper that looks like wood. In order to color the wood, I'm going to use the um, Tim Holtz Distress Ink Walnut Stain and an ink blending tool. I always keep a piece of scrap paper for being able to blend. Tap it off. Just start blending that ink in to whatever your desired um, color really is, how rich you want it. Um, and I'm going to have the sign kind of be a couple of inches, um, maybe like an inch and a half wide. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my ink blending. And once I'm happy with how it looks, I will um, then cut it down to size and I will stamp um, one of the words onto it. And then I'll show you how I'll fix it so that it will look more like a, um, a sign going across the gates. Okay, so I have my wooden sign made. All I did is I just used some scissors and I, you know, cut it down to a size that I thought would look good. Um, and then I went ahead and used the rubber stamp and some um, ruby red ink to stamp the word caution. Um, and I was a little messy with it. One, to, again, just make it look like it was, um, you know, not a, a, a perfect sign that was made. Um, that it's somebody, you know, just made it to, to warn others not to, not to go in there. Um, and I think it'll be fun. Um, and you can, you know, just let your imagination run with it, create whatever story you'd like to, you'd like to tell with the card that could be spray painted on. It could be written in another, you know, red substance, um, depending on where your imagination takes you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some double-sided tape and I'm just going to adhere it down to one side so that when, um, the gates are closed in our card, it's going to look like the board is going across the gate warning people not to not to go in. So I also thought it, you know, might be fun and a little creepy to to add um you know just just a little something else that that signifies that they should use caution in regards to going in. And Scrappy Boy Stamps um has these stencils for Halloween this year that are really a lot of fun and one of them is has this hand that's reaching up out of the ground. But what if that hand just so happens to be sticking up from behind the wall? So I have it lined up and I'm going to take, um, in order to get it on there, um, I'm going to take my um, black marker, alcohol marker, and I'm just going to lightly trace in that hand because then I'm going to fill it in um, to make it look even, even more spooky and creepy. Um, I'm going to have it be a, a different color that will cover up that um, black ink. So we'll just lightly put some black there, just so that we have the, the outline of that hand coming up. And I think that looks great. Um, so what we're going to do next is um, I have this um, other mica stain from Tim Holtz that is called Wicked Elixir. There is a darker green called, um, I believe it's Decayed, 
but I think that this lighter green is really a lot of fun. Um, and so what I'm going to do is instead of obviously I can't spray it on there, I'm going to go ahead and um, take um, this paintbrush and I'm just going to lightly paint this on. So I'm going to dip that right in and then I'm just going to cover up the black just by, by painting around it. And I'll show you the finished effect. Okay, so I finished. Um, and then I took my black marker and I just like put in the indication of some black fingernails at the tip. Um, I really like it. I think it looks a little spooky um, and it's fun and it's Halloween. So the front of the card is now done. Um, you can add other elements as you'd like. You can, you know, obviously do whatever it is you'd like. You could stamp something more up here in the front, but I'm happy with the way it looks. I don't want to overdo it. Um, so now I'm going to move on to creating the back panel with the haunted house. I absolutely love this haunted house um, stamp from Blank Page Muse. Um, as soon as I saw it, I, I knew I wanted it, and I knew I wanted to create with it for um, a Halloween card. And I wanted a way to really showcase it, because it really is a beautiful stamp when you see it, um, see the, the stamped image of it. Um, and it's really, um, what's great about it is it's easy, because we'll do it, you know, with one color, and then you can go in with markers and add in whatever details you want, but the most of it is going to be done with whatever color you choose to stamp it in. Um, so I have my piece of white paper that I'm going to stamp it onto because I'm going to end up fussy cutting it out. Um, put the stamp there and I'm going to go ahead and load up the stamp with ink and then stamp it. So I chose to stamp it with this cloudy night, um, which is a really dark kind of charcoal-y gray, um, color from Alt New. Um, because I didn't want just pure black, and I'm also going for, um, I want it to look almost kind of like foggy um, to really make it a creepy night. So um, I think that this color achieves it. And if you look at the, the detail within it, it, it's just such a great stamp. You have your picket fence, you have your um, stone or cement stairs going up. Some of the siding is, is going off the house so that you see boards underneath it. There are windows that are boarded up. Um, you see shades halfway down on some of the windows. Um, and also a jack-o-lantern jack in the center window there. So lots of fun details. And it really is quite the spooky haunted house. I'm now going to go ahead and color um, to add in the little pieces of accents that I'd like to. Okay, so I went and stamped um, and colored in some, some just additional details onto the haunted house, the door and the siding and some eerie blue lights up from the, the attic area and the jack-o'-lantern and some yellow lights just to make people wonder if anybody's home used a white gel pen to just do some lines along the picket fence. Then um, I also put some double-sided foam tape onto the back of it because I want to add a little dimension and make it look like it's sticking out in front a bit. Um, I also then took some black ink and a brush and I put it down the bottom of the, um, of the background and then took a, a, a white brush, uh, like a, um, it looks like one of these, and put some white ink on there and um, went over it just to like give the appearance of some ground and some grass in the darkness. And then I also took um, some uh, Lost Shadow Oxide Ink and went over the, um, the background of the sky again, just to like give it um, kind of like a, a, a misty or foggy type of look. So I'm gonna take the backing off and I'm gonna go ahead and stick down the haunted house and I'll be back. Okay, so I put my house down, and I also just cut out a circle, and I wanted to make a, a moon, so went ahead and just put some light yellow and gray ink, on, you know, onto that, and then I adhered that down with some craft glue. Um, and now I'm lining up the frame just to see. I, I think I'd like to, instead of stamping Happy Halloween, 
I think it would be more fun just to go ahead and, and write it in myself. I certainly could stamp it, but I'm thinking I'm going to use a um, Secura glaze black pen and just write it kind of like up over here um, so that there's the, the happy Halloween sentiment included as well. Okay, so we're almost finished here. Um, I had that all aligned, and then um, in order to attach the the sides and the doors to the, the back panel, what I did is I had it like this from where we had scored before. I just folded that over on each of these, and this will attach to the back of the back panel um, to form the, you know, the base of the card. So I'm going to add some double-sided tape and then put the panel on and we can take a look at the finished assembled product. Okay, so I've adhered the back and then I you take one door and you slide it in from behind onto that side and then you do the same so that when you're done, you open the doors and there's your completed card. You have your haunted house in the moonlight. You have the, the gates. You have the, the wooden sign saying caution. You have the creepy hand coming up from the back. And it just makes for a fun, interactive Halloween card. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make one.